But I do like to brag that I married a bisexual woman because it upsets a very particular kind of man <laughs> that I really enjoy upsetting because this is a decision and you weren't. Again, I didn't specify who this was a feel-good show for. I was taking notes while watching the special, you know, so I could remember if there was something specific I wanted to bring up. Within the first 10 minutes, I had already jotted down land acknowledgement, mass extinction event, Christian Baker, bisexual wife, upset straight guys, and men can't handle rejection. So Hannah Gadsby has a new Netflix special titled Something Special. Let's talk about it. So Hannah Gadsby is a stand-up comedian, allegedly, who is probably best known for her viral sensation, Nanette. Nanette came out on Netflix back in 2018 and it made a lot of headlines specifically for the interesting way it tried to incorporate social justice with comedy. I mean, basically Hannah Gadsby turned the special into one huge lecture. Donald Trump, Pablo Picasso, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, Woody Allen, Roman Polanski. These men are not exceptions, they are the rule. And they're not individuals, they are our stories. And the moral of our story is we don't give a shit. We don't give a fuck about women or children. We only care about a man's reputation. Well, I don't know about you guys, but if there's one thing I definitely look for in my stand-up comedy, it's angry lesbians yelling at me. But seriously, that actually was the opinion of a lot of people, a lot of journalists in the access media, so much so that at the time that I'm filming this, Annette on Rotten Tomatoes has a 100% fresh score on the tomato meter, that is the reviews of certified professional critics, contrasted with the not so amazing audience score of 26%. So yeah, a divisive special to say the least. And Nanette actually ended up kicking off a conversation as to what exactly stand-up comedy really is. Does a stand-up comedy special even have to be funny, you know, for it to be poignant and important. Despite the controversy, Nanette definitely garnered a lot of attention, if nothing else, and it catapulted Hannah Gadsby into, I would say, worldwide fame. And with that number of eyeballs on their platform because of Gadsby, it really wasn't a surprise when she ended up releasing a second Netflix special. And as someone who actually has seen both Nanette and Douglas, because apparently I just like to torture myself, I think it's pretty safe to say that while Douglas definitely wasn't as angry and preachy as Nanette was, that was really Gadsby like at her peak, the special still uh, definitely had its moments. My last show, Nanette, gave a lot of people the puff of fish. Like, you know you've made it. And I say people, but it was only men. <laughs> Hashtag not all men, okay? Of course it's not all men. It's never been all men. Generally speaking, it's really only the men who use that hashtag. They're the ones, you know, men, pronouns, me. You know, they're, they're the ones who go out of their way to let me know that Nanette was not comedy. Now, Douglas didn't get nearly as much attention as Nanette did. But overall, it was still extremely well received by critics. It currently has a 93% tomato meter score and a significantly improved 66% audience score. And I think the reason why this audience score is so much higher is because A, despite the activism that was still definitely present in Douglas, uh, ultimately it still actually did have comedic aspects, which I think a lot of people were kind of happy with. But also because Douglas didn't get nearly as much attention as Nanette, I think a lot of people who actually bothered to watch it and then go on to review it were Hannah Gadsby fans. You didn't have these strangers who had no idea who she was and weren't interested in her message happening upon the special or watching it because of all the controversy and then being disappointed by it. I suppose at this point probably knows what to expect from her. Well, fast forward to 2023 and Hannah Gadsby now has another special out. That's right, her third on Netflix. Pretty big deal, a milestone few comedians will ever reach. I've basically heard nothing about about it. Like, unless I was a person who was actively out there looking for cringe to watch or content on YouTube, there is like zero chance that I would have ever heard of this. Which is kind of strange considering all of the hubbub that Nanette got just five years earlier. I guess to give you an idea of how big the drop off in popularity has been for this Gadsby Netflix special, for reference, Nanette has 49 critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and over 1,000 audience reviews. In contrast to that, Douglas, again, her second special, 
has 29 critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and 250 audience reviews. Not as high as Nanette, but still definitely respectable. Which then brings us to something special, which by the way, did come out this year, uh, but it's been months since its release. And so far it is sitting at only 14 critic reviews and absolutely no audience score whatsoever, at least on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, I mean, no hate, no shade here. Again, any Netflix special is a huge accomplishment, but if I were Netflix, if I were Hannah Gatsby, I'd probably worry about the trend that I'm seeing. I guess in 2023, even amongst the most progressive of us, fewer and fewer people are just willing to voluntarily spend an hour of their time being lectured about how homophobic they are. And that's something that Netflix, even though they really try to be good progressive allies, I think they are aware of at this point. Because if you look at the trailer that they put out for something special, it seems like they're definitely making an effort to let people know that this Hannah Gadsby special, unlike previous Hannah Gadsby, speed specials is less of a lecture. And in fact, this one actually is kind of fun. I have dragged you through a bit of my shit over the years, but it's time for some payoff. This is going to be a feel good show. Or is it? No, it is. So to me, at least, it seems like they are trying to let people know, all right, guys, uh, we know we've kind of put you through the ringer with the previous two specials, but don't worry, you're not going to leave this one just feeling terrible about yourself for being a straight white male. So with that said, I went into watching something special because you guys know, you guys know I had to. I had to watch it to talk about it. I went in with perhaps a misplaced sense of optimism. I think she has the capacity to be funny. I really do. But I think what happened with Annette and Douglas is that she made the con decisions to say, no, no, I think comedy is going to take a back seat here because I would rather, it is my preference to instead use this opportunity, this platform, and to have this audience around so I can discuss my grievances with things like gender and sexuality issues. And as a result of someone who would rather my stand-up comedy actually be comedic, I was not a fan of her first two specials, but you know what? Seeing the apparently new spin on life she has uh, for something special, okay, I was intrigued. And I will also add very quickly let down. Cause as it turns out, even a self-described feel good show from Hannah Gadsby, you're still gonna get quite a lot of political and social messaging in there. And this became very quickly apparent to me as I sat down to watch something special because like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this special starts off with a land acknowledgement. For people who aren't familiar with the concept of a land acknowledgement, first off, I envy you. Essentially what it is, is when you take time to acknowledge that the land you are on uh, has basically been stolen by colonial powers, which of course are bad and evil and wrong. And I mean, at the beginning of something special, there is a title card that reads, the show was quote, filmed at the Sydney Opera House on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora nation. And apologies if I'm saying any of that wrong. And here's the thing, what gets me about land acknowledgements? I mean, yeah, you're acknowledging that this is stolen colonized land, sure. But are you doing anything about it? In the case of Hannah Gadsby, okay, she's acknowledging that the Sydney Opera House is on indigenous land. She still chose to have the special there. Did she donate any of the proceeds for the special to the indigenous community? Was there a specific reason, aside from obviously prestige, uh, that she chose to have it at the Sydney Opera House, even though it's on indigenous land and she could probably have found another place to do it that either wasn't on indigenous land or that actually did belong to indigenous people? therefore they would have the revenue going directly to them. So basically I'm trying to figure out, was there anything that was done for the indigenous community by having this land acknowledgement? Is there any actual benefit to including this title card at the beginning of this special, aside from Hannah Gadsby letting us all know that don't worry, she agrees with the message. As far as I could tell, no. That brings us to the actual special itself. And I am pleased to report that uh, at no point during the special does Hannah Gadsby just start yelling and screaming at the audience. So I guess there it's, it's already an improvement from Nanette. But with that said, it's still clear that even though Hannah Gadsby is actually making jokes in this special, she still absolutely has a chip on her shoulder about cis hetero Christian patriarchy or whatever you want to call it. There's actually this bit at the beginning of the special where she discusses uh, her marriage to her new wife and the fact that their wedding cake was actually 
a shark cake with two otters, not because they have any specific affinity for sharks or otters, but because their goal was to trick a Christian baker into making them a wedding cake as, as a lesbian couple. We wanted to trick a Christian baker into making a gay wedding cake and it, is, it worked. It's like, nah, mate, that's not a wedding cake. I'm turning 10. Easy, so gullible. Believe anything, Christians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, so he's going to hell. Uh, you're, we've all got to do our bit to get through this gay agenda. Um, sending Christian bakers to hell one at a time. You've concocted a scheme in which the success has been that you've given money to someone who does not support your lifestyle. Huge win. Bravo. And it's also evident early on in the special that uh, Hannah Gadsby is concerned about climate change and actually views it as a mass extinction event. I know this because this is these are just things she says, not even as part of a joke or anything. They're just statements that she makes on stage. I do want to acknowledge that the world is ending. I don't want you to think I'm oblivious. I'm not. I've clocked it. We're done. We're cooked. We're cooked. But the thing is, I don't think I can solve it? Not tonight, not, not in the time allocated. So I'm just gonna ignore it. And just for the next hour, we're gonna feel good together and then we can head back out there and be the mass extinction event that we are. So yeah, even though there is at least comedy and jokes here, if you were hoping for something non-woke, non-preachy and apolitical, I would say definitely look elsewhere. And I will say having actually trudged through the entirety of the special, which is over an hour, you guys are welcome. Please like this video if you appreciate my efforts. It does seem at the very least like the social commentary is kind of front loaded. Uh, after you get through the first maybe 20 minutes of the special, it becomes a lot more normal. She talks about things like having to deal with her social awkwardness as someone who does have autism. Also what it's been like being married and like having her wife meet her parents and just kind of more general life stuff. So I wouldn't say that Something Special is my favorite comedy special. Uh, I can at the very least say that it is my favorite Hannah Gadsby special for that reason. With that said, if anyone was keeping up with Hannah Gadsby during kind of the pandemic and specifically the time surrounding Dave Chappelle's Netflix special, The Closer, and all of the controversy that caused, you may have been surprised that there was a third Netflix special for Hannah Gadsby at all because after Dave Chappelle released his Netflix special, Gatsby actually came out and very publicly and very vocally criticized Netflix for platforming Chappelle. After her second special, there was a question as to whether Gatsby might make more for Netflix due to the firestorms created by other comedians, namely Dave Chappelle, but also Ricky Gervais, for their transphobic humor. In 2021, Gatsby addressed Netflix chief Ted Sarandos bluntly on social media, F you and your amoral algorithm cult. The following year, they reached a new deal, paying Gadsby not only for this special, but also for a forthcoming LGBTQ comedy showcase. So on the one hand, Gadsby is happy to slam Netflix for daring to platform Chappelle and Gervais, but on the other hand, she's also clearly okay with taking their money. How exactly does Gadsby reconcile these two stances, you might be wondering? Well, she's been quoted as saying, in a notoriously transphobic industry, I am looking to broaden the scope of opportunities for genderqueer performers from a around the globe, as well as expand the diversity of offerings to audiences on one of comedy's biggest platforms. It's also written that in an interview with Variety, Gadsby acknowledged her change of heart was strategic. If you want to change the conversation, you still have to be a part of the conversation. I don't know. I feel like there's an argument to be made that perhaps Gadsby's something special is as much of a virtue signal as the land acknowledgement that starts the show off. That's basically all I have to say for now though. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Uh, have you forgotten about Hannah Gadsby? Did you watch Nanette? Did you watch Douglas? Are you going to watch something special? And do you think that Netflix actually expects to make money on Hannah Gadsby material moving forward? Or is this just their way of kind of balancing out having edgier comedians like Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais and that they can say like, yeah, we have these people that make transphobic jokes, but Hey, Hannah Gadsby makes jokes about men. Therefore, you know, we can do both. They, they cancel each other out. Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.